Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can showcase a list of your clients using the Clients List widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With it, you can create displays that go beyond a simple client roster. You have the option of using images or text or a combination of the two. Moreover, you can add hover effects for an added touch of verb. There are also options for different layouts or different combinations with other page elements. You can mix and match all the widgets from the key add-ons collection to create a really unique and striking site design. This page we're on right now serves to provide some examples of this widget's use and the style settings you can make. Beyond different hover effects, there are options for adjusting the typography, the colors, the amount of information you display, and more. So, without further ado, let's see how this widget works and what you need to know to use it. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for Clients List. Here it is on the left. Drag it over to the page. And this is what the widget looks like by default, without us making any changes to it. Now, the first thing I want to do is add two more items as I want to show five clients in total. Okay. With that sorted, let's start with the options from the top. The first one is for picking the image proportions. We can pick them from these options to decide how we want our images to be displayed. I'll be keeping this set to original as I plan to upload images with my ideal dimensions, which I prepared earlier. Then we have the number of columns option. You can pick anything from 1 to 8. I'll set mine to 5, which will put all my clients in a single line. There they are. Below that, we have the Columns Responsive option, where we can decide how many columns will be shown on a range of different screen widths. You can keep it predefined, or you can pick Custom, which lets you set the number for each particular range. The first two screen sizes here are for laptops. We don't have an option for the largest screens, the ones that are 1920 pixels wide, because the number of columns shown on them is determined by the number of columns option we looked at earlier and where I set 5. So, for this first range of widths that applies to laptops, I'll change the number of columns to 5. And I'll do the same for the second option, the one that encompasses Mac screens. Then, for the next width, the landscape orientation on tablets, I'll leave 3. And the same goes for the portrait orientation on tablets. Finally, the last two, landscape orientation on mobile phones, I'll set 1 and one for the portrait orientation on mobile. Alright, after that we have the space between items option. It lets us adjust how much space we'll have between individual clients. That's this here. I'll clear this to keep the default value. Next we have the enable borders option. As you can see from the note below, if you opt to use this, it will disregard your space between items setting. Let me demonstrate. If I enable the inner border, then the items will be next to each other, with only this thin border separating them. Other than this, there is also the old border setting, which creates a border around each item. Let me click away so we can see it better. And there, the same thin border can be found around each client item. Ok, hovering over the list makes that hard to see, but the borders are both above and below the items. I'll click on the list to select it, which will reopen the widget's options. And here we are. I'll briefly disable the border so I can show you this option that you get only if you're not using a border. And that is enable boxed items. If we switch it to yes, we get this list layout where the items are in boxes with a background color, which you can change using the style options. Ok, that's all I wanted here. I'll go back to the border option and enable all borders. Alright, next we have the hover type option. It's set to none by default, so nothing happens when I hover over any of the list items. But we have several options for effects we can use, if we want to. One is change image. With it, when you hover, the initial image gets replaced with the hover image. You'd upload that second image within each individual item. Next, we have the opacity setting. With this one, it might be faint to see, the image would get a slight film over it. Then there's the scale setting, which makes the image zoom in a bit. Then the horizontal rollover, so the image seems to move away horizontally. And finally, there's the vertical rollover, which creates this effect. I'll be keeping this setting. 
and now it's time for me to start uploading the images. To do that, I'll open my first item, and we have two fields for uploading images. One that will be visible regularly, and one that will appear on hover. So, let me start by uploading the first one. This one. Insert. Now, I can add different images, even though I chose vertical rollover as my hover effect instead of change image. And those different images will trade when someone hovers over an item. But I don't want to have that visible a difference, so I will simply upload the same image for the hover as well. Then when I hover, there. I get the visual effect, but the client image stays the same as it gets traded with itself. Now, on to less complicated options. There's the client title. That's simply for replacing this title text here. You can type over the placeholder text, or just erase it and it will be as if the title was never there. And the same goes for this client text. You can type over this dummy text or simply erase it, which is what I'll do. Like this, my list will only have the image with the client's name. And we have this nifty option, client link, where we can set a URL for our client. I'll briefly add a hashtag as a placeholder, and then the image will be clickable. Alright, I'll remove the hashtag as I just needed it to show you how the option works. And with that, we covered all the options within an item. I will now skip ahead as you don't have to watch me going through all the other items and replacing their images and erasing the text content. Okay, here we are. My last item is done. And this is what my client list looks like when I've just customized it. So this is before getting into any style options, which is what we'll do in a minute. But first we have this section called developer tools. When we open them, there's just one option here. Switching its setting to yes will get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, so we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Okay, now we can move on to the style tab and see what we have in there. And the first section concerns the border style. Please note, if you haven't enabled the border, this section will be empty for you. That's simply because you don't need options for editing something you're not using. But since I have a border, I can now set its color. The option comes with this easy to use color picker so you can set any shade you like. Then there's the option to pick the border style. The default one is actually solid and I'll switch to it so you can see. There. But I'd better increase the width to make any changes more noticeable. Ok, so this is the solid border style. We also have dashed, which looks like this, and dotted, which looks like this. I'll set it back to default as that's the style I want to keep. And I'll clear the change to the width as I want to keep the border fine and subtle. Ok, after that we have the box style section. This is empty for me as, by using the border, I opted out of using the box item layout. I will show you the options for this in a bit, but for now let's carry on and take a look at the style section. The first option in here is for adjusting the content alignment. The default setting is center, but you can switch that easily between left, center, or right. I'll return it to the center. After this, we have a handful of options that allow you to style any text content you may be using. Anything from changing the color or adjusting any of the typography settings. However, I'm skipping all of these as I wasn't planning on using text and therefore deleted it. So, the next applicable option for me is the images margin bottom, which allows me to add more space below the client images. It's very straightforward and most useful if you have any text under the images. As I don't, I'll just clear this. There's a similar option to it, the title margin bottom, for adding space under the title text, unless you erased it as I have. Finally, we have the content padding option. By increasing the values here, we can increase the space around the content, both image and text. Since I'm mostly happy with the default look, I'll only make small adjustments to select sides of the content. More specifically, I'll delink the field so I can add different values for the top, which is going to be 89 pixels, and the bottom, which is going to be 73 pixels. And that's that for my clients list. I'm going to hit update to save my work. There it is. My list is all done. But, I still promised you that we'll look at the boxed style options. So let's go back to the content tab, 
Disable the borders, which will reveal the option to enable box titans. I'll switch to yes, and then we can see what options there are for styling this layout. For one, we can change the background color. You can simply set whatever shade you like. Please note, I'm using PNG images with a transparent background. That's why we have this complete box fill with the new color. Other than that, we can adjust the item padding. By changing this, it starts from one pixel. You can adjust the space around the content within the box. So this will work on both the image and any text you may be using. Okay, that's it for the box style options. Let me go back to the content tab so I can restore my plan design by disabling the box items layout and enabling all borders again. There we go. My list is back to how I wanted it. I'll save it by updating just in case. And it looks how I wanted and it has all the hover effects I planned for. Everything is working as it should. So to finish up this tutorial, I'd like us to take one last look at the page we started from. The one where we can see different examples of the lists you can make with the client's list widget. You have these examples as a guideline for potential design solutions or points of inspiration, whichever you prefer. Whether you take advantage of anything you see here is entirely up to you. The purpose of this tutorial was to show you what options you get with the client's list widget and how to go about using them. We hope you found this video guide helpful and that you will soon be trying out the client's list widget along with others in the key add-ons for Elementor collection. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.